24-7 is. I get the privilege to meet people from all across the country and around the world who have such dynamic, impacting stories that like every week, it's like on, it's like Christmas for me every week, meeting people with stories of impact. And that's what this whole thing is about. There are two elements that we give a lot of attention to when you're born and also when you die. But on Impacting Life 24-7, what we tend to do is we like to focus on that time period in the middle because that truly is the greatest impact. You know, from all the things that we have experienced over the last 12 months, it probably seems like 12 years, we have experienced so many dynamics. We've experienced racial un and tensions unrest. We've experienced political divisions. We've seen fires and hurricanes. And all of those things can be distractions. But at the end of the day, it's important for us to focus. And my guest tonight is gonna to help us focus on getting out the door. I'm so delighted to have with me author and speaker and uh, internationally known great man, David Hollingsworth. Welcome, David. Thank you very much, CL. It is great to be here. And since you're in the home of Camp Lejeune, I'll give you a hoorah for the Marines. There you go. That's right. <laughs> and so, uh, again, to all of our Marine Corps friends out there, uh, you're going to be uh, pleased to stick around for this story because David has a connection with the Marine Corps that uh, I won't do the spoil right this moment. David, you know, listen, me and you've been talking in the pre-show for 30 minutes before beforehand. And what I can say about you is... One one things that I know my audience is going to take away from is that you are living proof that anything is possible. And so before we get into all the nitty gritty, one thing that I do up front, because sometimes people listen at different intervals, can you tell people how they can connect with you right away? They may want to go check you out while we're while we're talking. How do people connect with David Hollingsworth? I am easy to find, although my name is more common than you would think. Um, the easiest way to find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, other places on the internet is Hollyworks, H-O-L-L-I-W-O-R-K-S dot com, which is my website. If you go there, uh, you can download a free chapter of my book. And that's also my handle on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and on Twitter. So just H-O-L-L-I-W-O-R-K-S, Hollyworks. That's Easiest awesome. Way to find me. I think I subscribed to you already. I think I'm just waiting on my, yes, you my did. I was looking for a free book, not the whole, not just one chapter. <laughs> <laughs> we we can talk about that later. Uh, I think I should have sent you a chapter. I will make sure that I've uh, got it out to you uh, before I go to bed tonight. Yes, sir. So, uh, hey, Scotty, uh, Scotty was on our show before Scotty Oakley. So we're so thankful again, David, for you taking time out of your schedule. I know you got a jam packed schedule. You were just on an interview uh, last night, I believe, yep. or the, the other night. And so uh, I think Thank you for, and you know, listen, ladies and gentlemen, how David and I got together, you would think, man, we were long time drinking buddies from the Marine Corps days. We, this, this whole thing about networking and leveraging and, and, and strategizing with other people that are in your space. I've been talking about that, how important it is. And so J David and I are in a, in a, in a, a like similar space and, I was looking for some more people to be on the show for 2021. And when he responded, I said, man, we can't wait till 2021. We got to have you right now. And so I'm glad that you're here. So you've got a book out and that book is called Get Out the Door. And uh, where can people find that book? Uh, well, right now it's going to be released in December. Okay. Uh, and there'll be a big uh, social media push with that. It'll be at an Amazon website near you. Okay. Uh, but if you go to my website at hollyworks.com, you can get on the list for pre-release and uh, download the first chapter for free. Okay, awesome. I'll do that. And I want to be a part of the pre-release as well. So we're so, again, those of you tuning in and people tune in at all different intervals uh, on our show, Impacting Life 24-7 with your OCL King. I'm joined tonight by none other than David Hollingsworth, author, speaker, and communicator that brings impact to many, many, many people. So David, one of the things that I like to do is just let, introduce my guest to my audience. So tell us a little bit about yourself, David. Sure. Uh, I've worked in IT uh, since college. I'm an IT professional in Northern Virginia. And um, the story uh, behind the book is in 2004, I had a motorcycle accident and fractured my spine and was told that I might not walk again. Um, 
it took me three months in the hospital and six months of recovery um, to get to quote unquote normal. Uh, but over the next few years, I went from being in a wheelchair to running the Marine Corps Marathon. And it took me a while to figure out what the lessons of that journey were. Um, but over the last few years, I finally put together a book that tells that story. And my goal is to share that story with other people because I think that everybody has obstacles they want to overcome. And everybody has goals or places they want to go. And the hardest lesson for me to learn was that the hardest part wasn't the obstacle or the journey. It was getting started. Wow. which was the basis for the book. Wow. And, and, and again, I know some of the nuggets that, that we have in the pre-show, ladies and gentlemen, I can't share with the general public because that was good stuff. But, and, and again, one of the things that I think we're going to, going to be a theme of tonight is helping people to get started mm -hmm. and listening to your story. You were just riding, trying to get uh, updated on your motorcycle. You were kind of a novice rider at the moment. And uh, how did the, how did the accident happen? Sure. I was, uh, I was 43 years old at the time and um, I guess having a midlife crisis and I wanted to ride a motorcycle. You should have got a Corvette. <laughs> I should have got, it would have been safer on four wheels. Um, but instead of some big powerful Harley, I had a little Honda Rebel 250. And I was being very safe and very practical with it. I had a helmet and gloves and was doing everything I needed to do to be safe. But one day I was practicing in a local elementary school parking lot and the bike got away from me. And before I could stop, I hit a curb, bounced off the bike, and landed with my back directly on the corner of the curb. Mm. Uh, according to the ER report, it was an explosive burst fracture of the L2 vertebra on three axes of 60% compression of the spinal canal. And my right leg was initially paralyzed. Mm. And prior to surgery, the doctor said, we're going to do everything we can but I don't know if you're going to walk again. Wow. And even though I was pretty doped up at the time, I knew that that was serious. Yeah. Um, but after a seven and a half hour surgery and bolting my spine together with four giant screws and two big titanium rods, mm. I had to be put in a, uh, what they call a TLSO brace, which is goes with my armpits to my hips. And it was like a big turtle shell that held me together while my body healed. And I was hospitalized for about three months. And by the end of that three months, I could stand and I could walk about 10 feet. Wow. Yeah. Man, in a turtle shell. <laughs> in a turtle shell. Yeah. And if you turned over on your back, you needed help getting up. Was uh, <laughs> it was it was quite a humbling experience. Right. And And had you had any major injuries like this before? I had the typical childhood stuff, you know, right. a couple broken arms, stitches here and there, you know, the stuff you get being a kid. Right. Uh, but I had never been in a major accident prior to that. I'd never been in any in any motor vehicle accident in which I or anybody else was injured. So you so you've taken this you've taken this tragedy and truly turned it into a triumph, especially on some of the things that you've done. So when, when, when I've got people in my audience from all different walks of life, we've got religious leaders, we've got people in politics, social, civic, the whole gambit, about 4,800 folks that, that follow, you know, what we do on a weekly basis. And, and one of the things that I would like for you to help us with is one of your expertise is in goal setting. What are the keys uh, to goal setting? Because I got a lot of people out there that are saying, man, the times are so uncertain. How, where do I start? How do I even get this done? What's a goal? Help us out. Sure. There are tons of books and tons of experts that will tell you how to plan, how to set goals, how to set smart goals, how right. to know every little activity that you need to do to get from point A to point B. That's all great. But what I found is the most important thing about any goal is to just get started mm. uh, because no matter where you are and where you want to go, um, the hardest part is that inertia, overcoming the inertia of being stationary, whether that's physically or metaphorically. Right. Um, and the hardest thing for me was getting out of the, really the funk I was in mm -hmm. at the time um, because 
in 2012, when I started the journey from being where I was to running the marathon, um, I was not physically in a good place. I was sedentary. I weighed a lot more than I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I knew kind of where I wanted to go, but I knew I didn't want to be where I was. Right. So the trick for me was get started, do something, uh, because it's a lot easier to change direction and adjust once you're in motion, again, both physically or metaphorically, than it is to uh, do it when you're standing still. Mm. Well, that, that's a powerful thought because, uh, you know, half the battle sometimes people in people's mind is all of the details associated with the goal. Oh, and, and also you've got to be perfect. It's like, yeah, forget that day one. Right. Uh, Covert Bailey, who wrote the book Fit or Fat, uh, had a great saying that said, start so slowly that people make fun of you. <laughs> um, and whether it's, whether it's running a 5K or writing a book or looking for a job, it's to get over the idea of having to be perfect. Right. Or even having to be good. Um, whenever I write something, uh, there's something in writing, there's something called the dirty first draft where you get something down on paper. Right. And then you look at it like, oh my God, this is awful. <laughs> That's awesome. Right. Because you've got something. Right. And now that you have something, you can take that and make it better. You know, that's interesting that you say that because I was just telling my wife the other day, my pictures from, from starting as a professional speaker, my pictures go back to when I started back in 2009. Right. And, I, and I told her, I said, you know, there was something about the, all those pictures, everybody, you know, who, who would go work with me or whatever, they'd be like, man, why do you need so many pictures? Why are you taking pictures of this and that and the other? And some of them, if you look at them now, they look like, you know, they're aged, they're aged 12 years. But here's, here's the reality. Some of those pictures I can still use today. Oh, yeah. And if I hadn't taken those pictures, I wouldn't have, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of in an advertising funk. What can I do? I go back 10 years. I got a really cool picture and I just got oh, yeah. started. Like you're saying. Oh, whenever I was on vacation, uh, I've, I've never been a good photographer, but with the advent of digital photography, I shoot everything. Yeah. Because there's going to be a few good ones in there. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, and over time, when you're working towards a goal, you'll learn where to spend your energy and where you need to not spend your energy. Right. But when you're getting started, forget all that. Ah. Uh, because you will learn a lot just by getting in motion. Excellent. Uh, now you're talking about motion, but here's where some people, uh, and then my next question for you is, you know, some people get in motion, but then they get stuck. Mm -hmm. So how does a person who's trying to, to hey, hey, David, I'm, I'm trying, brother, but I just feel stuck. What, what is your remedy for helping someone get unstuck? Well, there are a lot of things that can help with that. Sometimes it's taking a pause so that you can change direction. Sometimes it's um, doing some research on what could the potential issues be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's knowing to seek professional help. Um whether it's getting a coach, whether it's seeking advice, whether it's putting some investment in yourself or your own education, those are all good things. Right. So getting stuck is, is not necessarily a bad thing. It's a sign you need to pay attention that something is going on that is not what you want. That's good. That's information. Right. So now that you know what you don't want, Let's look at the possibilities and narrow them down to say, okay, I can choose a number of directions to go in, including the current one. So let's choose something different. Wow. Uh, and then over time, you can narrow down that focus to say, okay, that's where I want to go. That's powerful. That, that's awesome. And, and, and I think those are really, that's really practical keys that he gave you, ladies and gentlemen, those of you tuning in on Impact Life 24-7. Uh, with CL King, I have with me as my guest, David Hollingsworth. You can find him at David at Holly, hollyworks.com. All you got to do is type in David at H-O-L-L-I-W-R-K-S.com. And you can find him everywhere. He's got a new book coming out called 
get out the door. And that's what we're discussing tonight. Some of the, some of the tragedy that David faced in his life, ladies and gentlemen, he is pouring into this book and in our conversation tonight to help us go understand goals, helping us get unstuck. And another thing that we're going to talk about is the lessons that you have learned from your experiences, David. Sure. Uh, there are a number of lessons that I learned. And when I, when I started writing the book, I had to figure out what is the message or what's the big idea behind that journey? Because fortunately, most people will not have a serious motorcycle accident. Mm -hmm. And if people are smart, they probably don't want to want to run a marathon. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and that's all good. That's all well and good. Right. Um, so I had to take that and say, okay, what are the common themes that most people will run into? And as I said earlier, everybody has obstacles they want to overcome. Everybody has places they want to go. Right. So the first thing you need to do in any situation is identify what is the obstacle. Mm -hmm. you know, what is standing between you and where you want to go? In my case, it was recovering from the motorcycle accident. And then later on, when I was working towards running the Marine Corps Marathon, it was getting over my sedentary lifestyle and training enough so that I'd be physically capable of doing that. The second point is you've got to start with a single step. Ah. Is no matter, it's the, the, the saying is that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, but you got to start. You know, the best plans will not help you unless you get started. Um, right. Third thing is you've got to commit to making the change. You know, you've got to decide this is important to me. Ah. Yeah. So that you can focus. And then the fourth thing is getting out the door. It's getting up every day and doing something that gets you closer to where you want to go. Man, that's powerful. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, again, those of you that breeze by and come in and sneak peek at what's going on here live, you're tuned into Impacting Life 24-7 with your host, C.L. King. We run this show live. I don't know why we do this. There's so much stress associated with running a live show. I could just easily do it in the studio, but there's also some inertia that we get from having an audience uh, having an audience around the world uh, join with us. So you are blessed to be hearing from our friend and our, our new friend, David Hollingsworth. Uh, you can find him at hollyworks.com, H-O-L-L-I-W-R-K-S.com. He's the author of Get Out the Door. And so we've we've covered a few things relative to helping us as a as a people. One thing that he said, I, and I would I would like to just kind of dig a little bit further on this um, the sedentary life that you were living. Remember you talked about that, David? Well, sure. I, I went to Walmart the other day, believe it or not, where the Walmartians were, I was there and every, all these masked robbers were in Walmart. Well, anyway, what, what, I went to the back electronics and they had three pallets of ring lights. I've never seen pallets of ring lights. Why? Because more and more people are at home. You know, I, I work from home. I, I, you know, I can't travel anymore. And so here I am at the house. But being at home is not necessarily an excuse to become unhealthy. Right. So, David, there are people out there that are just kind of like they're stuck. They're at, they're at home. And so you, you talked about this when you started your training. How did you begin your training, you know, after your, after your accident? Well, it, initially after the accident, I had to really build up my walking strength. So the first week I was home, I'd walk out to the mailbox and back. That was it. <laughs> right. um, and, and I would be glad when I got to the mailbox because I could hang on to it for a few minutes before I got up the, the breath to take myself back. Um, so that was in the beginning. In 2012, I had gained about 80 pounds between 2004 and then. Wow. So I had to be very careful about what I was eating because uh -huh. that was the main cause of the gain. Um, and then learn how to train smart <clears throat> because I wasn't in my twenties. Right. Um, I was in my fifties and I had to make sure that I wasn't overtraining and hurting myself because when you get injured when you're older, it takes you exponentially longer to recover. Right. So the first time I went out and trained, I had asked my doctor because he'd been working with me since the accident. I said, can I run? He said, yeah, somebody's chasing you. <laughs> so I signed up for a 5k and I went out to train for it. 
the first day I jogged about 60 feet and that was all I could do. Right. Um, and so I made sure that I never ran two days in a row, but the first week I would jog 60 feet, walk 60 feet and jog 60 more. And in about six months, I went from jogging 60 feet to running my first 5k. Ah. And it was all from starting at that single point and building on that over time. Mm. And I, and over the next six months, I went from doing a 5k to running a half marathon, half marathon. How far is a half marathon? For those who don't know, if you ever see somebody with a sticker on the back of the car, it says 13.1, mm-hmm. that's 13.1 miles, which is a half marathon, which is about half as far as somebody who really works hard runs. <laughs> um, so a marathon, a full marathon is 26.2 miles. Uh-huh. Half marathon is 13.1. So in 2013, November, I ran the Indianapolis um, Monumental Half Marathon. And when I got home, I said, you know, if I can do half, why can't I do the whole thing? Might as well. So I put together a bucket list for my 10-year accident anniversary. And in 2014, I ran up the Empire State Building. Mm. I did two sprint triathlons. I Uh, did a bike ride, a mountain climb called the Assault on Mount Mitchell. I saw that. (laughs) And I also ran and finished the Marine Corps Marathon. Hoorah. And that's where the hoorah comes from. I was surrounded by (laughs) lots of members of the Corps who encouraged me to keep fighting the whole way. Wow. And you finish right at the uh, Marine Corps Memorial, or as a lot of people call it, the Iwo Jima Memorial. Iwo Iwo Jima, yep. Uh, And you climb a hill to get to the finish. Oh, beautiful. And the Marines are there encouraging you every step of the way. Wow. And prior to the event, uh, I was interviewed by Comcast Sportsnet because they had heard my story. And they said, What's, what was the hardest thing about running a marathon? Mm-hmm. I thought back and said, okay, was it the accident, the recovery, the training, the running? It was none of that. The hardest thing was getting up off the couch, getting moving and getting out the door every day. <laughs> which led me to the title of the book. Once I get out the door, the rest was easy. Can I just stop you there, David? I mean, I'm, I'm just feeling, I'm, you know, in church, they call it the Holy Ghost. You feel goosebumps. But the, but the reality is, is that all of those things that you've done, running the Marine Corps Marathon, running up the Empire State Building, after having an, an accident that, that really could have ended any type of physical activity, let alone walking, you may not have never ran, but you, you you didn't you didn't allow all of that to cloud your vision because the thing that you focused on most was getting out the door. Oh yeah, and the one thing I want to remind people of, even if even if they if they have a physical achievement goal, is you don't have to be an athlete because look at me, I am not an athlete. Um, <laughs> in fact, for the assault on Mount Mitchell ride. Uh, If you look at the 2014 results, I am the last official finisher. I finished in last place, but really kind of feel like I won. Um, You don't have to be good to get started. You get good by getting started. Oh my goodness. Can you please say that again for the people in the back? Say it again, David. I might need to write it down. Um, (laughs) You don't have to be good to get started. Right. You become good by getting started. By getting started. So, you know, poor Katrina McCain is on here and we've had her on our show. Poor Katrina McCain says, uh, this is some really good information. You know, one of the things that, that I am taking away from this, and I hope you will too on Impact Life 24-7, is that some of us cannot be handcuffed and captured by this season. David and I talked about this, that we have to, we obviously have to observe Uh, the safety and common sense precautions that we need to take. Nobody's diminishing that. But at the same time, your, your dream should not be quarantined, right? Absolutely. Uh, It's, it's really easy to fall in the trap of, I can't do this or I can't do that. Right. Um, I can't dance to save my life, but I don't let it stop me from doing other things that I can do. Right. So even if you're stuck at home, Uh, now there's an incredible opportunity to learn all sorts of new skills on on sites like Udemy and other 
uh, things on the web. There's all sorts of opportunities to connect with other people. Mm -hmm. uh, there are um, things you can do both physical fitness wise and nutrition wise in your own home and around your own home. And you don't have to come in contact with anybody. Right. So don't worry about what you can't do. Focus on the one thing that you can. You do that, you're ahead of the game. Awesome. Now, one of the things that um, that I, I like about what, what you present, and ladies and gentlemen, you can find my guest, uh, just Google his name and he comes up at the top. It's David Hollingsworth, or you can find him at hollyworks.com. He's the author of the soon releasing book, Get Out the Door. One of the things that, I, that, I, that we talked about in the pre-show is how does someone get started on a goal? And, and so if you can cap, you've given us a lot of, of, uh, of, you know, specifics, but if we can wrap all of that up, what would you say to someone who's saying, Hey, how, how do I get started on this goal? Well, the thing to not discount is what you already know. Mm. Um, if you have a physical goal or financial goal or an education goal, you probably already know the basics. If you're, if you're trying to get in better shape, well, the answer is eat less and exercise more. Well, okay, stop going to McDonald's so much. You already know this. So that, that, part, that part is fairly easy to understand. Uh, if it's, I want to be, have enough money to invest, well, stop wasting money on things that don't get you closer to your goal. Uh -huh. So don't worry about being perfect or having the perfect goal. Is have a general idea and get moving. Um, <laughs> and, and which goes back to the book. It's right. get out the doors, get started. Because once you take that first step, the next step is a lot easier. Um, and once you're in motion, whether it's physically or metaphorically, it's a lot easier to adjust your direction in closer to where you want to go. If you're, if you're sitting in a parked car, trying to turn the steering wheel, it's really, really hard. Right. But if you're driving down the highway at 60 miles an hour, you can steer that car with one finger. So <laughs> once you're in motion, you can, even if you're going in the wrong direction, you can recalculate, you can turn, and you can go better aligned with the direction you want to be. You heard that, ladies and gentlemen. Again, David Hollingsworth, the author of get out the door as our guest tonight here on impact life 24 seven. And I'm so thankful that you again have taken time out of your schedule. David is an award-winning speaker, author, and a, you know, a life impactor. This man has overcome uh, something that most people would probably, it would, it would end life as they know it. And what I mean by that is some people would just say, I'm done. I will confess to you, David, that when I had my two failed back surgeries, the doctor said, there's nothing more I can do for you. After the second one, it made me worse. Mm -hmm. And uh, they took out some discs and vertebrae and stuff and it, and it, it didn't work. Right. And so someone told me I was at home. I was on 3,700 milligrams of pain medication. Ouch, yeah. yeah. And uh, a gentleman told me this. He said, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but you got to start exercising. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't. I'm in pain. He said, I'm sorry. I had the exact same surgery that you did. Mm -hmm. And the only way I got off of this medication and all of this stuff was to get moving. That's your message to us, David, is that we've, we, we cannot just stay sedentary on our dreams, on our goal, on our visions. We've got to get moving. And let me just add this one last point. When I did, mm -hmm. I did exactly what you said. I started very, very small, oh, yeah. very limited because my back was killing me. And yeah. I was the first patient uh, with my pain management doctor, her first patient ever to get off of pain management. That's awesome. No drugs. And so David, let me ask you this in terms of, of traumatic memories. Mm -hmm. How do you, how does a person or how do you deal with traumatic memories and, and how, what advice would you give some of our, some of our listeners? There are a lot of things that I've not experienced that other people have and things that I've experienced that other people haven't. Um, and I wouldn't wish having a traumatic experience on anyone. However, having gone through what I've gone through and listen to what you just said, um, sometimes you will feel that or someone may tell you that life as you know it is over. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, mm -hmm. 
if you have something bad in your past, uh, if, you, if you've seen The Lion King, there's a scene where Rafiki hits Simba on the head and he goes, ow, that hurt. He goes, yes, but it doesn't matter. It's in the past. <laughs> the past can hurt. Right. But the question is, are you going to run away from it or do something about it? Uh, um, so if you have a traumatic experience in your past, get professional help to work with you to process that and to help you learn how to handle the day to day. And then point yourself in the direction of, you know, where you want to go. Uh, there are certain things that I don't do. I've not ridden a motorcycle since then. Uh, however, uh, I've been on a bicycle a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ride in traffic all the time. Uh, I don't let that stop me. Right. Um, I got back on roller coasters. Um, I have jumped off the Stratosphere Hotel in Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> I have driven an Indy car around Richmond International Speedway. Um, there are things that I do that could cause me to experience that same fear. Mm -hmm. But what I found from the time I went skydiving is fear is really a sign that you just need to pay attention Ah. because the fun, the excitement and adventure are not on this side of the door. Mm. You've got to step through that door to find out the great things that are on the other side. So if you've had a traumatic experience, I understand the fear. I've been there. I may not have had the same exact experience you've had, but I've had a doctor tell me, I don't know if you're going to walk again. And it's hard to get through that. I will not minimize that at all. But once you decide that you can move forward and things might be better, just get started. You know, take that first step. Once you take that first step, the next one is a lot easier. That is so powerful. I'm, th- I'm reminded of our guest that we had a couple of days ago, maybe a week or so ago. We had Teresa uh, Serio up in New York. She, awesome. back in uh, 2001, she was in an accident or maybe 2002 mm-hmm. and it, it completely took her leg off. And uh, in her rehabilitation, she began to sing to her to her people in the re- rehab place. And uh, she sang all over the world now, sang at Walter Reed Medical Center. And uh, she she that trauma, she she processes it and she processed it. And then she pointed, like you said, in in the direction that she needed to go. And David, I really appreciate you giving our audience some very, very practical elements in this season, because this is an uncertain season. We're kind of in a, (laughs) we're, we're in a gray area right now, but I I am trying to, without sounding insensitive, I'm trying to encourage people by having quality guests like yourself on our show to say, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you can still make it. You can still do it. Would you agree, David? Absolutely. Um, The, if I look back to prior to the accident said, would I have done all these things without the accident? The answer is, I don't know. Right. But what it did is push me to learn how to push myself. And I don't regret the experience one bit. I didn't want to go through all the pain of it. Right. Um, but I've learned a thing or two and I'm grateful for that experience because it taught me that no matter what happens, there's something better down the road and I'm working every day to get there. Awesome. Now, the, one of the last few questions I got, cause I do got a couple other questions. Sure. I, I want to talk about the comedy piece too. Cause sure. I, I like, I was thinking in the pre-show, I said, I want to hear, I want to hear something to help us laugh. So we might okay. let you do that in a minute, David. Um, but some folks says, okay, well, that's great, Dave. I'm not a runner. So, you know, how does all this apply to me? What would you say to them, Dave? Well, the thing is, uh, as I said earlier, the, everybody has obstacles. They want to overcome everybody has places they want to go. And you've got to identify the obstacle take the first step, commit to change, and then keep getting out the door. Um, So whether it's a physical goal or financial goal or whatever, it's get started and get moving in some direction. And then as you learn more, you can adjust that direction, refine it to go places that you never thought were possible in the past. 
Wow. And, and I, I can appreciate that because like I told you off air, when we started this podcast, I, you know, I'm, I'm a professional speaker. I, I started a podcast. I fought as a hobby and uh, it was, it was a train wreck. <laughs> it was a, I don't even know if I was on a track, my friend. Um, but now you, you are my 101, 101st guest. And I'm thankful for people like you, David, that continue to inspire folks all across the country. And, and listen, if you, if you would like to connect with David, you can find David at uh, David. Um, you can find him at hollyworks.com. That's H O L L I W O R K S.com. And his book is coming out, which is called get out the door. And you can find out more information. You can get a free chapter downloaded, just connect with him. Uh, we, we love to, here's the, here's the next step for our audience, we, because we don't want just people sitting on the bleachers saying, Oh, well, that's nice. We want you to connect with people that are continuing to move forward. When I look at what David's doing and I look at his message, I'm like, you know what? I remember what I told you, ladies and gentlemen, David, I'm going to confess on air. My 99th episode, I was ready to shut this down because the internet well, I'm glad you stuck with <laughs> the internet here is just disastrous trying to run everything has to grow and the equipment and the sound and and then I bring somebody on and the internet's all crazy I was just like you know what I don't have time for this I it's just so frustrating but then when I got to episode 100 I realized I read an article that said don't quit something until you've tried it a hundred times Right. And when I made it to episode 100, I said, man, I could do this. We get to 101. And look who I got, David Hollinsworth, go. man. I'm so, I'm so glad. So Dave, you also, in addition to being an award-winning speaker with Toastmasters and other venues, been as seen on the, you, um, what, what uh, newspaper have you been in? I've been in the Washington Post. I've been in the Fairfax Times. I've been in my hometown newspaper, the Kokomo Tribune. The Co um, <laughs> I've been quoted in uh, Computer World, Network World, and a number of other uh, publications. Awesome. See, and this is what I'm trying to tell my, my audience. We bring people on that, you know, they're ordinary people, but they're doing extraordinary things. And I'm so thankful for that. So, David, you also have your hand in stand-up comedy. Tell us about that. Sure. Um, I've dabbled in it since college and I worked at a resort in uh, the 1980s um, with some folks from Second City in Chicago uh -huh. and they got me uh, excited enough to actually go out and try doing stand-up and I found out that I liked it. Um, I liked being on stage. I liked writing jokes. I liked refining jokes mm -hmm. and it's a chance to Try some things that don't work, um, but like you said, you wanted to quit at your hunt, your 99th podcast. Doing stand-up comedy is like playing golf, and probably like you felt on your podcast. Right. Some days you get out there and you can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. But then you have that one good guest. You hit that one good shot down the fairway. You tell that one good joke that lands, and you're like, I can keep doing this. Right. And sometimes you tell a joke that people respond to and you're like, yeah, this is why I do this because it can make somebody's life a little bit more enjoyable. And that, that's what I get out of it. It's, I like making people laugh and um, it's, it's always fun. Okay. So, I mean, I'm going to put you on the spot. We didn't rehearse Dave. Uh, so I, I, I need some ja joy and laughter in my life. This is my last day of work, ladies and gentlemen, for the rest of the week. We are going to an undisclosed location. And Dave, I will be zip lining on Saturday, 300, feet off, 300 feet off the ground. I'll be screaming, but I'll be thinking about you because you parachuted. So David, help us laugh. Give us something to laugh about. David Hollingsworth does so many great things in addition to being a comedian. Let's hear it, Dave. Has anybody ever told you you look like somebody else? I get it all the time. It's never anybody good. It's nobody that I want to look like. Um, I mean, it would be one thing if I looked like George Clooney. I mean, who wouldn't want to look, you know, women wouldn't want to look like George Clooney, but you get the picture. Did you know that George Clooney has his own brand of tequila? It's true. And the stuff is magical. The more you drink of it, the more I look like George Clooney. <laughs> the more <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I told I told that uh, and a woman in the audience 
I said, is it, is she, I said, is it working? She goes, no. I said, keep drinking. <laughs> Yeah, you keep, and you know, I've, I think I've heard that spin a little bit too in terms of uh, uh, a man looking at a, a, a unattractive woman, and she gets prettier as he continues to consume. So, oh yeah, but, it's, but uh, yeah, it's it's fun to do, and uh, it's fun to work on things. And like anything else, the first time I write a joke, you know, it's frequently it doesn't work, but you get up there, you keep doing it, you find out what works and what doesn't work. Uh, like if you see a Chris Rock one hour special, that took him a year to make good. Right. That consisted of several nights a week of trying five minute bits that don't work. Right. And it's okay to suck. You know, it's it's okay to be bad at something. Uh, mm -hmm. Zig Ziglar said, you know, the biggest part of anything is to be okay with doing something and doing it badly mm. until you do it enough times to do it well. And that's the whole philosophy behind the book is don't worry about perfection, get started. And once you do, you'll move in the direction you want to go. Now that is so powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, David Hollingsworth. And, and where are you out of again, David? I'm out of uh, Northern Virginia in the Washington DC area. Awesome. See, man, we got, I'm telling you, we got people from all over the globe. I think you're about to get some snow up there, Dave, uh, in a couple it's, more months, huh? It was uh, pretty cold tonight. The dog uh, did not stay out long when I took her for a walk. <laughs> well, where I'm headed tomorrow night's low is going to be 27. So I'm, I'm going. We definitely going to bundle up from uh, the Eastern Carolina weather. And so, David, I just want, I just want you to know, on behalf of our team here at Impact Life 24-7, you truly have made uh, tonight's show memorable. And we hope to be able to connect with you again in 2021 and maybe do some collaborative work because your Absolutely. message and your the way you deliver it is so practical. I feel like now um, that all I've got to do is just get up out of this chair and take a 60 steps out of my door. Uh, it, I want to just leave with take, this one. Take that, one step. One step. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I want to leave you with an opportunity to speak to our audience. Um, you know, it's kind of a broad based audience. So wh what words would you have for our audience as we get ready to close out 2020? 2020 has been an incredibly tough year with lots of challenges from every direction. And the hardest part of any difficult situation, any obstacle, any goal that you want to achieve is getting out the door. Once you do, the rest is easy. He said, he said one of the hardest things to do, ladies and gentlemen, is simply getting out the door. And I know so many people have said, man, CL, I don't know if I can do it, brother. Listen to Dave Hollingsworth. Find him at Holly, hollyworks.com, H-O-L-L-I-W-R-K-S, the author of get out the door. David, you have really inspired me. When I come back <laughs> off, when I come back from vacation, here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> when I walk out the door and my exercise get up, I'm gonna think about you. I'm just well, gonna go, you. I'm just gonna go out that door. I'm not gonna look to lose a hundred pounds the first time I go out the door, but I am gonna definitely get myself out the door. And ladies and gentlemen, you got to get a hold of this book. The book is entitled Get Out the Door by David Hollingsworth. You can find him at David. Uh, you can look at him up at hollyworks.com. And David, listen, we're going to connect again. I thank you so much for being on the show, sir. Well, thank you, CL. It's been a pleasure. And I hope your audience uh, got a thing or two from it. And I look forward to working with you in the future. Yeah, we're going to work together for sure. So I got you on the friends list. Just make sure to check your messages, brother, because we'll I'm do. always messaging, okay? Okay. David Hollingsworth, thank you so much, brother. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you. All right, have a good night. So, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here live uh, with my guest, David Hollingsworth at hollyworks.com. He is an author, a speaker, and as you can he hear, a world changer. I'm blessed to have had these moments with him, and I hope by sharing those moments with you, you all feel as blessed as I do. Someone who suffered a traumatic uh, motorcycle accident told by doctors that he may never walk again. Not only did he begin to walk, but he began to run. 
running marathons, uh, running 5Ks, running up mountains, running the Marine Corps Marathon, running up the Empire State Building after suffering a traumatic injury that truly could have limited him from even moving from point A to point B. I challenge you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to connect with my guest, David Hollingsworth, David at hollyworks.com or hollyworks.com. Get his book, get on his mailing list. It is get out the door. That is truly going to revolutionize and change your life. So ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell you this, man. I, I am thankful that I get to end the week like that. I know it's only Tuesday for me. We have our show Monday night at 8.30. Tuesday night at 8.30 and Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. But I, C.L. King, have fulfilled my obligations and my contract. And now they're letting me take a week off. So you can find us back here, right here live, Monday night, this coming Monday night at 8.30. Open mic Monday where we'll be discussing, because I did not get to discuss it this Monday, how to find your space and how to occupy your space. We're going to teach on that a little bit. And David Hollingsworth has definitely set the stage for that teaching, okay? So listen, I won't be doing any social media. I'll be in a place where there's no Wi-Fi and me and the family are going and we will be socially distanced from everybody on the planet. It's very remote. And so we're looking forward to a time away. And I would suggest you do the exact same. David Hollingsworth was our guest tonight. Holly works. Dot com. Thank you for tuning to Impacting Life 24-7. This has been your host, C.L. King. We'll see you next Monday. God bless you.